Hi everyone, Jeff from Halcyon Masters. We're gonna play some Vainglory today, and as we wait for the queue, we're just gonna open up a couple glory boxes as Netherworld Fortress is in there, and I wanna kind of tear up the skins on that one. So we accepted here, and we're gonna to wait to get into draft. So here in the draft, I've got the first pick and ban. So we're going to look at either banning out Black Feather or maybe Adagio at the top. I think my teammate's signaling for Adagio, so we're going to ban him out. And then he's saying that he might actually want to play some Black Feather as we have the first pick after um, the enemy team picks their ban. So we're going to see who they ban out and then make our choices. wonder if they're going to pick. Oh, all right. So Glaive is banned out, which is interesting. So that means that they might be running a little bit more of a squishy comp. So Black Feather would be a good choice for us. So we secured the Black Feather. Now we're going to wait for their first choice. Now picking Black Feather first is a dual purpose. One, it gives us a pretty powerful hero up at the start, but it does signal to the enemy team that we're going with a heavy weapon build most likely. So we're thinking that either Rhyme or Arden may be a good um, synergy with ours. Enemy team picks Fortress. Probably a good choice as Fortress can do a really good gap close and close in on Black, Black, Black Feather quickly. So we're going to see who their second choice is. Ah, so their second choice was... Um, Arden. So it looks like Arden will most likely be going support and then Crystal Fortress if I had to guess. So with those two I don't think we're gonna do Rhyme as the gap close can be pretty quick. So Roxy's looking to secure his pick. We want to just take in um, Catherine. I'll probably be running that as our main roam. And now we're gonna think about who we want to be our um, crystal powered hero. Looking at Celeste she does have the stun, which would give us a double stun. Maybe Jewel would be a good choice, going CP on her as well. Again, giving us the double stun comp. And we do pick and secure Jewel for our third. Enemy team has their choice. Five, four, and oh, Kestrel. Okay, so looking at this comp, their Kestrel is probably going to go weapon power. Fortress is probably going to go crystal, and Arden is going to be their support. I'm taking a look, just making sure I have the right skins for this game. I do love the winner, uh, Catherine skin. That blue bubble just looks great, in my opinion. All right, looking at the enemy team, unfortunately, I don't know who these guys are, so we'll see how the gameplay is. So the key for us really is to get Black Feather nice and fed, as he's going to scale great into mid and late game. Catherine's a pretty well-rounded hero. The stun at the beginning gives us a good advantage with early team fights, and then she's just going to scale into the late game. So I pick up my Iron Guard contract, a potion just in case we have an um, early team fight, and then a flare to give us some vision when we move down into that bottom um, bottom bush for the shop. So we're going to do a pretty standard rotation. I think we're going to start up here on the top. So the top camps are going to spawn around 25 seconds. There we go. So I'm going to get this minion started. And then I'm going to try to move out of the way so that um, our jewel can get the experience for killing the uh, minion and not myself. And I'm going to work on the bottom two and get those down into about halfway. As you see, I'm moving out of range so that all the experience is going to my jungle carry instead of to me. So really what my goal is, is try to get him up to level two before we go down into uh, the shop. So that way we may have a little advantage if we have an early team fight. So starting these two, I throw a flare over just to make sure no one's coming up. I'm gonna go to the shop. I'm gonna pick up a scout trap or two. That way I can uh, lay down a little bit of extra protection and give myself some vision. So we see him over here, we're kind of questioning whether we should go in for a fight, we decide to back off. 
We're going to rotate up into the lane, one to drop a little bit of vision. I like that spot right there because it shows me if they invade into our jungle. And then here's the second scout trap right there at the top, which will help uh, prevent <coughs> our laner from getting ganked if they decide to come up through the uh, bottom bushes. We unfortunately do not get Kestrel. She does a really good stealth right there at the top when she sees me go for with my um, Merciless Pursuit. So we give Juarez the thumbs up just saying, hey, I think you've got it. So we're going to start on our next jungle rotation. Got the healer at the top started, moving down into the uh, back camps. Clearing those out again halfway. Moving out because I want to give him a little bit more experience, although I think I was still in range on that one. We're going to work on our mid healer. So we know that the enemy team is doing the same rotation that we are because we saw them in the uh, bottom shop. I now have enough money for my Storm Guard banner. That's going to give me... Um, ooh, we've got a fight coming up here. All three of them are down here. I pop my bubble. Stun out Arden so that hopefully he can't get me. I'm going to move up. I signal Juarez to come down and try to help us out a little bit. I'm moving to do a little bit of body blocking because of that Kestrel um, Glimmer shot. So it looks like we're going to try to for focus on uh, Fortress here. Oh, two of us go down. Roxy gets out and is um, seeking a little bit of cover underneath the turret. But that um, Kestrel really has some great range on the Glimmer shot, so she ends up putting a little bit more damage on. Death timers are relatively short, so we're going to move back in here. We're going to make sure that they're not trying to steal our back jungles, because that's really where the money is going to be. So Roxy's working on that healer. That's going to get him back up and running. They did take our back camps, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to throw a flare off to the side just to make sure that they're rotating out and to make sure that um, they're not going to go up and try to gank our laner. I'm surprised they didn't take this middle healer. Good for us. It gives us a little bit more gold. Drop a scout trap here to help uh, prevent against those um, enemy invades. And we're going to take a look. So they did drop a scout trap there, so we're clearing out a little bit of vision. Allied hero and again, we're going to move up into lane. So they probably know that we're here. Yep, there's the flare. So they know that we're both camping out here. But we also know that their team is likely hiding in that other bush. So because Juarez is back shopping, uh, we're just going to take the last hit on a lot of these minions. That's exactly what Roxy's doing. So he uses his A and jumps in and cuts off Kestrel's retreat. Um, <laughs> should have saved Roxy that kill, but um, I guess we're going to call that one a kill secure, uh, secure instead of a kill steal. So we're going to rotate down into uh, do a little bit of shopping. I've got 600 gold. That'll get me... Uh, the first two items, tier one items, on our way to making that fountain. Start these front camps. So with the front camps cleared, we're going to move up into our mid healer. Uh, Warus is coming down. So because Warus is coming down to shop, I'm going to go with him just to protect him in case the enemy team is over there. He signals that he's okay, but I do see Fortress and Arden pop up on the screen. Um, but Juarez looks like he's going to do all right and move up into the lane. Plus that allowed me to rotate back and to get a little bit of the gold from um, the back camps uh, that Roxy was working on. We secure our minion miner, and now we're going to work on our top healer. So one of the tricks that I do as a roamer is always keep an, a very close eye on the mini-map. Pretty much when I know that I'm not in danger, I can tap around knowing the map well enough, but my eyes are pretty much fixated on the mini-map because it shows me exactly where the enemy heroes are. So, you saw that when they went out for the gank, Fortress used um, his gap closure to get on to Juarez, but Roxy was right there with a really quick um, rocket leap, which actually ended up stunning two of the people. So I thought that Fortress was still hiding up in that top bush. He rotated actually down below, um, used my Merciless Pursuit right there, but luckily the cooldown is short enough that I'll have it back up and running in case I need another one. So again, we're going to rotate back down. The key to our team, again, is to get fed. So we're going to focus on our jungle rotations. Because I know the enemy team is up there, I'm going to start on this mid healer. <laughs> Roxy does a nice little leap over the wall to get that guy. Our back camps are up, but we're just going to do a little bit of a reverse jungle rotation on this part. So again, can do a little bit of shopping. I've got my Life Spring um, Tier 2 Shield, which is going to help me work into that fountain. I drop a Scout Trap right there, uh, which both identifies one that the enemy had put down. 
And then also, um, if they had come and jumped on us, we would have had a little extra damage there. So, kill secured again there. Roxy ends up following, but Juarez is doing a good job on Kestrel. Blackfeather is now starting to pick up a little bit. I don't know exactly his item build at the moment. He's got um, the Rose Offensive onto Arden, so we can follow him pretty quickly. And there we go. We've got the uh, three kills. So I'm going to go back. It wasn't an ace because I think we uh, spread out the kills in enough time that they were able to respawn. Unfortunately, their mid healer and their front camps weren't available for me to steal at that point in time, but I am going to go ahead and drop a scout trap to give me some vision on their side of the map. I like to keep a couple scout traps in my back pocket. That way, um, if I ever do get to jungle invade on their side, I can drop a little extra vision and hopefully give us an indication on where their jungle and their roam are at any given time. And that really helps out with map awareness, prevents ganks in the uh, lane, and helps us um, plan our strategies. We hit level 6, so I put a point in the ultimate. That's going to give us a nice little power spike as it includes both a silence and some decent damage. Pick up a few more scout traps. Rule of thumb is that you want to have about 4 or 5 bits of vision on the map. I tend to go a little bit heavier on the vision because um, I find that with our play strategy and our team we do really well when we have um, a good concept of where the enemy is. We also like to tag um, key objectives such as the gold miner, minion miners, um, etc. with some vision. So that way we can plan our rotations and our movements around the map to make sure that we can secure those if the enemy team is going for it. So I got flared here, but I'm still okay um, camping out in the lane because I want to get some of the uh, gold from uh, Juarez's work on the uh, minion lane. So Roxy moves in using um, Jewel into their front bush. A little bit of a face check, but Jewel's heroic perk gives her additional damage or um, shielding and armor with the front. So it's okay if he actually does the uh, face checking every once in a while. So we're going to work on this turret. It was kind of interesting to see Arden just standing there. I'm not sure if he went AFK for a second or whether he was just trying to bait us out. Um, anyway, we do secure that objective. So we rotate down. We're going to try to take some of their jungle money. We got their mids. And now we're looking over into um, securing this gold mine. I'm actually starting to question whether their fortress um, is AFK because we actually haven't seen him in a while. I've seen Arden and I've seen um, Kestrel moving around the map, um, but we haven't seen Fortress, nor has Fortress Ultimate popped, which he should be around level 6 at the moment. So again, invading into their jungle, I'm going to place a little bit of vision. I think we are making the uh, assumption that Fortress is um, AFK, so we're going to go ahead and push into their jungle a little bit more. It's kind of unfortunate, I never like to see an AFK player because, oh, nope, there's Fortress, he's up at the top. So I've got my ultimate, I use it, silence, we know that two of their players are silenced, which is good. Um, <laughs> Juarez is in there, Roxy's coming in, the ultimate goes down, we're about halfway, I just used our fountain, which is going to help Roxy recover a little bit of health. Comes in, he's pretty low, he's taking some damage from their healer, and we end up securing the... Uh, the ace right there which is fantastic so that'll let us take another turret um, we've also got both minion mines so that's going to make sure our minion wave is pretty strong especially with the ace buff we may actually even get a second turret here um, so we're going to work on this really quickly so there comes fortress he's going to come in really not much we're going to do here so we're going to focus on the turret it goes down um, fortress is super low he does a good block get him I've got six seconds left on my stun, so unfortunately Kestrel is going to get away and get um, some heal. So, uh, looks like we're going to back off. We don't want to be too greedy. Um, even though we probably could win as it was a 2v3, they do have their base camp right there, which would allow them to uh, heal quite quickly. So Roxy is going to take some more money from their back camps. 65 gold for me, whereas jumps over the uh, wall to take the... Uh, Healer in the mid, which we probably should have given to Roxy as he's about halfway on his health. But it's alright. We've got our three teammates, so we can probably protect him. Gonna pick up the Crucible. That will be useful with Kestrel's ultimate, and then also to get our team out of um, Arden's gauntlet as well. 
Beginning in our jungle rotation. So as you saw there, I started leading up to work on the on the mid healer. And as I did that, kind of tethered the front minions with me. Although that was taking it away from Roxy, and when he used his rocket leap, he ended up missing the two front minions. So this is just where we can practice a little bit more of our synergies and um, you know the jungle rotation to make sure that we're as efficient as possible. Roxy has a fantastic rocket leap right onto Kestrel. Pretty much allows Blackfeather to come in and instantly delete her. Now we're going to work on Arden. So we get him, and now Fortress is the sole survivor. So as it's a 1v3, we can probably go ahead and push up into another turret, but I think we're going to back off and just play it a little bit more conservatively and move down into uh, their jungle again. So their backs are up, so Roxy's going to go ahead and get started on those. I'm going to work on the minion miner so we can get that extra buff on the minion wave. And we just got the notification the gold mine is almost full. So we'll probably rotate through here and work on gold mine after we take this uh, mid camp. So I drop a, another scout trap in that middle bush um, on the right hand side so I can get some vision to make sure that um, the enemy team isn't going to try to come in and steal the gold mine. We did just see Fortress over by the enemy team minion mine so we know we're relatively safe and we go ahead and secure the mine uh, payout. I pick up a shiver steel which is going to help for a couple things. One is Fortress is rather mobile especially with his hero perk when he's around um, um, another one of his allies. And then also to use on Kestrel so she can't be quite as stealthy and we can um, stick to her a little bit more which will definitely help out with um, some of Jewel's skill shots. Not as worried about Juarez because he can use his Rose Offensive to come in and um, actually mark her with a trail which still does show even if she's in stealth. So we've got a decent minion wave we're going to come up. I pop the Shiver Steel which you can see. Um, slows Kestrel right there, securing the kill for us. Now we've got Arden, he goes down, and we're going to go in and take out one of these turrets. Juarez is uh, signaling to take out the second turret so we can kind of balance the uh, balance the attack and try to cut down on the <laughs> death timers. We're coming in, we're getting this last turret relatively low. I'm going to take some aggro, but I think we can finish this one off before it does any major damage to us. And here we come. So Arden drops his gauntlet. Juarez does a great Rose Offensive on the outside of the vein, which um, allows him to do some work on it. Ooh, I'm getting kind of low. It's a 2v1 when we end up not getting the vein, and it's super low. <laughs> anyway, we're having a little bit of fun at this point in time because we're 14 minutes in. Kraken hasn't even spawned. Uh, we've got all of our turrets, and you know, it's a pretty one-sided game, but um, fun nevertheless. So at this point, I'm going to pick up some travel boots, maybe a little bit of extra crystal damage. I'm going to work into the Aftershock, which is one of my favorite items to get with um, Catherine at this point in the game, especially if I don't need the extra slots for um, Vision or any other items. And as you can see, a lot of my scout traps are still, um, still holding their place, so that's a good thing because we haven't had too much um, issues with uh, being invaded in our jungle. So I Fountain right there, give uh, Juarez a little bit of health as he was getting focused down pretty hard by their team. I do a Silence, uh, which helps out there, pop my bubble so that way if uh, their Kestrel starts to hit me at all, um, it will <coughs> kind of reflect off there. I did get into one of Kestrel's traps, but I was lucky enough to have uh, my bubble up. So you could see how when she shot me, a lot of the damage reflected back on her, allowing us to secure that kill. So now with getting the ace, we can come in, finally finish off the vein, and that's going to be good game. So we do a little celebration. <laughs> Roxy jumps on the uh, last of the minions, and we take our places for the uh, final photo. So we're going to go ahead and give everyone a thumbs up. Actually, I think I'm going to take away the thumbs up from their fortress, because I believe you went AFK for a little bit. As you can see with uh, 7,000 gold for Juarez, 5,000, 6,000 gold for the uh, rest of my teammates, we definitely did a good job of out farming the enemy team and that's actually what secured the win for us. Uh, take a look at the extra fame that we've uh, received and uh, actually my teammates just mentioned I got hotness for this game so I'm pretty pumped about that one. It's the first time I've hit this skill tier. Um, 
So we're going to continue the grind and keep it going. Take a little screenshot there. Thank you again for watching. More videos to come. Appreciate it.